Practice test four, problem seven. The best form ring company makes class rings for high schools and colleges all over the country. Each production is a three-step process involving molding, engraving, and polishing. The following table gives information about the time required for the steps in each production of high school or college rings and the time that machines and operators are available during one day. Um, and in case you guys are wondering, I do believe that the one on the test is also structured in this way where the table is set up so that it's easy to tell what the variables are and what the constraints are. And so we'll start with part A, where we have to set up the constraint for each limitation that they give us. Uh, first we'll do the constraint for molding. And our variables are going to be the high school rings and the college rings. So I'll use H for the high school rings, C for the college rings. These are our, all of our, our totals, um, our limitations, and these are the titles of each of our constraints. Okay, so the constraint for molding, we've got 1.2 hours for high school and 2 hours for college. And this is a limitation where we have to stay less than or equal to this amount. And now we'll set it up for engraving. 0.6 hours for high school, 3 hours for college, and that's less than or equal to 150. And then finally for the last one, we've got two hours for high school and two hours for college, and that will be less than or equal to 200. So this is our system of inequalities that we'll need to sketch a graph of and use some shading in order to show where all the possible combinations are. In order to sketch a graph, the first decision I need to make is which variable to put on which axis. And it doesn't matter which way you go, you just have to make sure and label it so that whoever is looking at your problem can tell what decision you've made. So I'm going to draw my first quadrant, and I only need the first quadrant since um, negative values in this situation wouldn't make any sense. I'm going to put H on the x-axis and C on the y-axis. And before determining what my scale should be, I'm going to go ahead and find my intercepts. That'll give me a good idea of how high I need to go on each axis. So I'll start with the molding. And with the molding, if I make the H value 0, then the C value would have to be 70. I figured that out by taking 140 and dividing by 2. And then if the C value is 0, then I need to figure out what 140 divided by 1.2 would be in order to figure out the H value. And I ended up with 116.67. Now I'll find the intercepts for the engraving constraint. If H was 0, C would have to be 50, that's 150 divided by 3. And if C was 0, then H would have to be 150 divided by 0.6, which gives me 250. And then last I'll do the intercepts for the polishing. If C was 0, then H would have to be 100. And in this case, the coefficients are the same, so the other intercept matches. Now that I have all my intercepts, I can go ahead and sketch a graph. Uh, well, let's see, my biggest value is 250, so I think I will scale this so that it's counting up by 50s. So we'll make this 100, 200, same on the y-axis. Okay, so for molding, we have a y-intercept of 70 and an x-intercept of 116.67, which would be about right there. And all of these are going to be graphed with solid lines. I'll go ahead and do my shaving now, or shaving, my, uh, my shading as well. Uh, and if I plug in 0, 0 as a test point, then I end up with an inequality that reads 0 is less than or equal to 140, which is true. So I would shade the underside. So 
For my next one, we've got a y-intercept of 50 and an x-intercept of 250. And again, if I plug in my test point of 0, 0, that gives me 0 is less than or equal to 150, which is true. So I'll shade underneath that line. And then my last one, uh, we've got intercepts at 100 on both axes. On each axis, there we go. And if I plug in my test point again of 0, 0, that gives me 0 is less than or equal to 200, which is true. So all three of these lines I ended up having to shade, shade underneath. And final solution region lies underneath all three lines. So it looks like my boundary is right here. That intersection point between those two lines and then it cuts down this way. So there's the boundary of my feasible region and then I would shade everything underneath that.